Oh, this is my candy box. Come on, boys. Come Leslie, dear, I think I'd go into Singapore tonight. Exchange this rifle. It's not heavy enough for Tiger. Well, don't be long. With the Tiger about, I'm afraid I'm as nervous as the natives. <laughs> I won't, don't worry. Robert, for heaven's sake, go if you're going. You know, Leslie, it makes me feel awkward and stupid to say some things. I'm not the least clever. But because I don't say much, don't think I don't appreciate your being out here with me. Wives like you can make these godforsaken places bearable, Leslie. Seven years on a rubber plantation, with no company but natives and a lot of dowdy planters' wives. Yes, Robert, that ought to be a test for a good wife. Hmm. Well, I'll be going now. Hang it all, I was forgetting the gun. Ah, uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Robert. Good night, boys. Yama. Yama. Yes, Missy. 
Yeah, I'm going to take this letter to Mr. Hammond at once. Yes, ma'am. Before you go, please put the shades down. Yes, ma'am. Yet each man killed the thing he loves, by each let this be heard. Some do it with a bitter look, some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss, the brave man with a sword. Letter for you. For me. Something wrong? Is it that white woman? No. You will not be gone so long? Only for about an hour. I shall be waiting. He lied to me. Come in, Jeffrey. Nice of you to come. Oh, have a drink, will you? Thanks, I will. I say. Is anything the matter? That note of yours was rather hectic. Jeffrey, I can't go on any longer. I'm at the end of my tether. Why, what's up? Oh, don't pretend. What's the use of that? Why have you left me all this time without a sign? I've had an awful lot to do. You haven't had so much to do that you couldn't find time to write me a line. There didn't seem to be any object in taking useless risks. Don't take me for a perfect idiot, please. I say, listen, darling, if you sent for me to make a scene, I'm going to take myself off. Jeffrey, don't you know how I love you? 
Well, darling, you've got a damn funny way of showing it. You drive me to desperation. Leslie, I wonder if you've noticed we hardly ever meet now without having a row. Is that my fault? I don't say that. I dare say it's mine. But when that happens, two people who are on the sort of terms that we are, it looks very much as though things were wearing a bit thin. What do you mean by that? Well, when that happens, the common sense thing is to say, we've had a jolly good time, but all good things must come to an end. Jeffrey. I'm on for facing facts. Oh. Jeffrey, what is that Chinese woman doing in your house? My dear, what are you talking about? Don't take me for a perfect fool. Don't you think I know that you've been living with a Chinese woman for months? Nonsense. The common gossip of the Kampong. My dear, if you're going to listen to the gossip I of the I want to natives... know what you're doing with that Chinese woman in your house. I didn't know there was a China woman about. I have seen her. What's she like? Common and vulgar. You're not paying me a very pretty compliment. Jeffrey. Will you swear to me that she is not your mistress? Certainly. On your honor? On my honor. That's a lie. All right, then. It's a lie. In that case, why don't you let me go? Because I love you. Because I love you, I tell you. Jeffrey, I love you. There's nobody going to ever going to love you like I love you. I can't go on without you. Without you, I'm just lost. I know at times that I've treated you so badly and hurt you and all of that, but it's only because I'm so unhappy. My dear, I don't want to make you unhappy, but it's no good beating about the bush. Oh. The thing is over and done with. You can't mean that, Jeffrey. You can't mean that. Leslie, dear, I'm terribly sorry, but the facts are there and you've got to face them. This is the end and you've got to make the best of it. You wouldn't treat a dog like you're treating me. Is it my fault if I don't love you? Damn it all, one either loves or one doesn't. But I love you, you see, I love you. Oh, oh, Jeffrey, I tell you, I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll give, I'll do anything. It doesn't make any difference what. You won't even give me a chance. Oh, my God, why can't you be reasonable? I tell you, I'm sick and tired of the whole thing. Do you want me to tell you in so many words that you mean nothing to me? Don't you know it? Haven't you felt it? You must be blind. Yes, I know. I know too well. I felt it. I don't care. It isn't love any longer. It's madness. It's torture to see you. It's torture ten times worse not to see you. If you leave me now, I'll kill myself. <laughs> I swear that I'll kill myself. Go ahead. You don't think I mean it. You don't think I've got the courage. I've no patience with you. You are enough to drive anyone out of his senses. You can do what you like, you can say what you like, but I tell you it's finished. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, I won't let you go. I can't. I love you. I love you. I'm fed up. Fed up, understand? I'm sick of the sight of you. Don't say that. Don't say that. Yes, I will say that. And what's more, the China woman is my mistress. And I don't care who knows it. If you ask me to choose between you and her, I choose her. You wanted the truth. All right, then. Now you have it. You swear the evidence you shall give in this cause between our sovereign lord, the king, and yourself shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, God? I do. What is your name? Mrs. Robert Crosby. Mrs. Robert Crosby, take the stand. Mrs. Crosby, perhaps it would be better if you told us the whole story in your own way. Do you think you could manage that? I'll try. Well, on the, on the evening of the tragedy, my husband was going to Singapore on business. I wasn't feeling very well, so I stayed at home. 
I uh, don't mind being alone because planters' wives get used to that sort of thing. So I was sitting quietly working on my lace when I heard footsteps and someone came on the veranda. Yes. Go on, Mrs. Crosby. Well, at first I didn't know who it was. And then he said, it's I, Jeff Hammond. So I said, oh, hello there, won't you come in? Were you surprised to see him? I was, rather, because he hadn't been up to the house for ages, so I told him that Robert had gone to Singapore on business. What did he say to that? He said, I am sorry, because I was feeling very lonely this evening, and I thought perhaps I'd come along and just see how you folks were getting on. So he helped himself to a whiskey and soda and lit his pipe. Was he quite sober? Well, I suppose he had been drinking, but it didn't occur to me just then. What happened? We were just chatting quite quietly, when suddenly he said something rather silly. What? I don't know if it's really worth uh, while repeating, but he paid me a little compliment. I think perhaps you'd better tell us exactly what he said. He said, you've got such beautiful eyes, why spoil them? and strain them like that. See, he was referring to the lace I was making. Had he ever paid compliments to you before? No, never. You see, I was a little taken aback, but I thought it best to take it lightly, and I said, well, I don't make any pretensions to being a raving beauty, you know. But you are, he said. See, it's rather silly to have to say things like that. And Never mind. Please let us have his exact words. Well, he said, you are beautiful, thank God. And what happened then? Well, he just stood and looked me straight in the face and said, don't you know that I'm awfully in love with you? I don't, I said. It meant so little to me that I really had no difficulty in keeping quite cool. So I said, I don't think it for a minute. And even if it were true, I don't want you to say it to me. I see. Go on. Well, then he fixed himself another whiskey and soda, and I began to wonder if he hadn't been drinking. So I said to him, Look here, I think you better not take any more of that. And I was quite friendly about it, but he emptied his glass and put it down and s said, Do you think I'm talking to you like this because I am drunk? And he asked me that in a very sort of abrupt way. And I said, well, that's the most obvious explanation, isn't it? I really can't go on. I, I think he's, it's so stupid telling you things like this. Never mind. Please let us have his exact word. He said, I've loved you ever since I first knew you. I've held my tongue as long as I could, but now it's got to come out. I love you, I love you, I love you. He repeated it, just like that. And his eyes were all funny. And he said, and I won't go home now. So I lost my temper and I cried at him, you poor fool, you don't you know that I've never loved anyone but Robert? And even if I didn't love Robert, that you were the last person in the world that I should care for? So he said, what do I care? Robert is away. Well, that was the last straw. I was simply beside myself. I thought him just a filthy swine to talk to me like that because Robert was away, so I said, if you don't leave this very minute, I'm going to call the boys and have you thrown out. And with that, he just said, the boys are out of earshot. And he took hold of me and turned me around, and I screamed, let me go. But he said, not much, not much. I've got you now. So then I cried out as loud as I could, boy, boy, but he held his hand over my mouth. I can't go on. It's all so shameful to tell you all of these things. I know it's very hard, but for your own sake, I beg you to tell us the whole story now. All right. Well, he flung his arms around me and began to kiss me. His lips were burning. He was like a madman. 
He kept on talking and talking. He kept on saying he loved me and that he wanted me and he held me so tight that I could hardly breathe. And I felt weaker and weaker and at one time I really thought I was going to faint. And uh, his breath was so very hot on my face that it made me feel desperately ill. You see, he kissed my face and my neck, my hair, my eyes, and suddenly he lifted me right up, and I felt that he was carrying me. I don't know what happened really, but he didn't look at me, and he didn't say anything, and I didn't look at him. But suddenly I could see his face, and it was all white, and, and his eyes were just burning. And he wasn't a man any longer, he was a savage. And then it was that it flashed across my mind that he was carrying me to my bedroom. Something happened, I don't know what, but he stumbled and fell. And uh, his hold on me loosened, so I dashed around the sofa, but he dashed right after me. And there was a revolver on the table, and I snatched it up. I didn't even know I fired. But I saw him stagger out towards the veranda, and then I saw him fall. And I heard the reports, one after the other. And I really don't ask you to believe me, but I didn't even know I was pulling the trigger. And suddenly I heard a little click. And I realized that I had fired all of the cartridges and the gun was empty. And he was lying on the floor all in a heap. And I knew he was dead and that I'd killed him. That's all. Prosecutors, take the witness. Mrs. Crosby, is it not true that Mr. Hammond at one time was a frequent visitor in your home? Yes. And hadn't those visits kept up until the night of the murder? No. He hadn't been to our, our house for over three months. Hmm. Just why did he stop coming? Well, my husband and I had heard that he was involved in some sort of scandal with the half-caste Chinese woman, and we thought it better that he didn't come along. Hmm. Did you ever see this woman? Yes, I saw her walking in the village. Was she attractive? No, I shouldn't say so. She was rather common and vulgar. All painted up with a lot of bracelets and bangles. You never met this woman or spoke to her? Of course not. The crown rests. This court is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Your wife's a fine woman, Crosby. It's a shame she has to be dragged through all this muck for a rotter like Hammond. Thanks, old man. Well, Ong? Is that all what this, sir? Yes, thank you, Ong. I'll see you later at the office. Very amusing, your assistant. Yes, and very efficient. You've born up wonderfully, darling. 
Everybody's talking about your iron nerve. Oh, Robert, it's been horrible. Without your wonderful love and faith, I know I should never have been able to go through with it. Well, tomorrow we'll see the end of the whole sorry mess. Yes, my darling, in 24 hours you'll be a free woman. Robert, do you think so? Mm -hmm. Robert, tell me, whatever happens, you'll always love me. No matter what people might say. Well, what can they possibly say? Oh, Robert, don't you know what I've done? They might say I led him on or something like that. Why, there's not a soul in Singapore who's for Hammond. Everybody knows that a woman like you wouldn't do that. Robert, Robert. Robert, when it's over tomorrow, let's go away from here. Let's never come back. Let's go far, far away. I'll tell you what, let's go to London. As a matter of fact, I was planning a surprise. You darling. A vacation in London. Yes. You see, I've saved a few thousand dollars. Oh, Robert. Then we could have the most beautiful time, eh? <laughs> and after that, there's a rubber plantation in Sumatra. A chap I know must sell out cheap. It's our big chance. Yes. Yes, that's our big chance. No more slaving for the company. We'll be out for ourselves. Why, in five years, we'll be independent for life. Yes, of course, we will. I'm sorry, sorry sir, but the time is up. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Just a new development in the Crosby case, sir. Something of a delicate and confidential nature. Well, <clears throat> what is it? <clears throat> it has been brought to my attention, sir, that there is a letter in existence from Mrs. Crosby to Mr. Hammond. Well, dozens of them, probably. Hammond had been a friend of theirs for years. But this letter, sir, was written the night of Mr. Hammond's death. It is quite unusual in tone. Where is this letter? Yes, its tone is, as you say, quite unusual. Oh, it's inconceivable that Mrs. Crosby should have written such a letter. It's not even in Mrs. Crosby's handwriting. I know it, sir. But the original is in the possession of a Chinese woman who was living in Mr. Hammond's house, sir. I see. What does she intend to do with it? She places a very high value on it, sir, as evidence. Oh. Just what value? $10,000. $10,000? She's crazy. Mr. Crosby would certainly pay it, rather than have his wife hanged by the neck, sir. Where would Robert Crosby get $10,000 anyway? The Chinese woman has already taken steps to assure herself that the sound is not impossible, sir. Very well, Ong. You need to of my client. I'll, uh, I'll do what I can. All right, sir. Ah, there are two conditions the Chinese woman has insisted upon, sir. Damn her impudence. What are they? Mrs. Crosby must bring the money herself. What? There will be no risk, sir. You and I will go as escorts. Of course, the money must be in cash. Yes. You've thought of everything, haven't you all? Hmm. Well, I have been educated in the schools of the white man. <laughs> I have learned much from the books the white man has written, sir. And how about the books 
The Chinese have written? Only one, sir. Confucius. That means. Damn clever, these Chinese. No, Robert's just like a child about the whole thing. After tomorrow, he tells me he's going to take me far away from this place forever. No, he wants to go to Sumatra. But before that, he's promised to take me to London. Mrs. Crosby, I think I should tell you that there is in existence a letter in your handwriting from you to Hammond. That's impossible. You'd better read it for yourself. But well, that's not my handwriting. I know. It's said to be an exact copy of the original. What does it mean? That's for you to say. But I didn't write the letter. That's a forgery. It would be difficult to prove that. It would be easy to prove that it was genuine. Well, if I did write it, I'd forgotten all about it. I might have written it years ago. It has no date. I noticed there was no date. But if this letter were in the hands of the prosecutor, they'd cross-examine your houseboys. They'd soon find out whether someone took a letter to Hammond on the day of his death. I swear I did not write the letter. Then we needn't go into the matter further. But if the person who possesses this letter sees fit to place it in the hands of the prosecution, you will be prepared. What would anyone be inclined to think who read that letter? That you told a deliberate lie. When? Under oath in court today. Well, I... I don't think it's so very strange that one little detail escaped my memory. Your memory is reproduced very exactly. Every particular of your interview with Hammond. It's very strange that you should have forgotten so important a point as that he came to the bungalow on the night of his death at your expressed desire. I hadn't forgotten... Then why didn't you mention it? I was afraid to. I thought if I told you that Hammond had come at my invitation, none of you would believe my story. I know that's very stupid and silly, but after I'd once told you that I had no communication with him, I was obliged to stick to it. Perhaps the terms of the letter are not very clear to your recollection. I'll read it to you. Robert will be away for the night. I absolutely must see you. I shall expect you at 11. I am desperate, and if you don't come, I won't answer for the consequences. Well, I admit that it's all extravagant and emotional, but I write like that, you know. I must have been very much mistaken. I've always looked upon you as a very reserved and self-possessed woman. After all, Geoffrey wasn't such a distant acquaintance. By the way, did you call him Geoffrey? Well, of course, everyone did. Mrs. Crosby, I've got to talk to you very, very seriously. This case was comparatively plain sailing. Although Geoffrey Hammond was much liked and on the whole thought highly of, I was prepared to prove that he was the sort of man who might be guilty of the crime which in justification of your act you accused him of. The fact, which was discovered after his death that he'd been living with a Chinese woman, robbed him of any sympathy that might be felt for him in the minds of all respectable people. I told your husband just now that I was certain of an acquittal. And I wasn't merely telling him that to cheer him up. I do not believe the jury would have left the box. But this letter has thrown an entirely different complexion on the case. I don't know what you're driving at. You mustn't expect other people to be stupid. This letter will put them on the track of suspicions that thus far have entered nobody's head. I won't tell you what I personally thought when I read it. I'm your legal advisor. I shall represent you in court. I take your story as you tell it to me, and I shall conduct your defense according to its terms. I do not wish you to tell me anything but what is necessary to save your neck. I've made such a mess of things, haven't I? I'm sorry. Who has the real letter? The Chinese woman who was living in Hammond's house. 
Do you think that she will uh, sell it? I don't know that I'm prepared to buy it. What do you mean? I don't think you understand what you're asking me. You're asking me to do something that is no different from suborning a witness. You don't mean to tell me that you could save me and you won't do it. You can't be that cruel. I'm sorry if it sounds cruel. I want to do my best for you, Mrs. Crosby. But a lawyer has a duty not only to his client, but also to his profession. I put myself in your hands. I know I have no right to ask you to do anything that isn't proper. I'm asking more for Robert's sake than for mine. And I think if you knew everything, you'd believe I was deserving of your pity. Poor old Bob, it'll nearly kill him. He's so utterly unprepared. He's so kind and so good. I don't think he's ever harmed anyone in all his life. You mean everything in the world to him, don't you? I suppose I do. And I'm very grateful for the love he's given me. Well, I'm going to help you all I can. But don't think I don't know I'm doing wrong. I am. I'm doing it with my eyes open. This woman demands $10,000. She also demands that you take the money to her and ask for the letter yourself. I won't do that. Then she'll turn the letter over to the prosecutor. Can it be arranged that I go? The prosecutor joined me in placing before the judge a request that you be allowed to spend the night in my house under police custody. I'm sure the judge will grant it. We can go from there. As Robert's gone back to the plantation, I'll advance the money myself tonight. It won't be necessary to show Robert the letter, will it? Don't you want him to see it? No. Well, I'll do everything in my power to prevent him from seeing it until after the trial. He'll be an important witness. I think it very necessary that he be as firmly convinced of your innocence as he is now. And afterwards? Afterwards, I'll still do my best for you. Not for me. For Robert. If he loses his faith in me, he loses everything. It's strange that a man can live with a woman for ten years and not know the first thing about her. It's rather frightening. I'll call for you here later.
奥さんいらしたかい。見たいか。I'll wait for you here. Have a snake fight. You want see the snake fight? Yes. How much? Because you want see five dollar. Twenty five dollar. If you want see something good. Yes. Yeah. Never see him. How much? Twenty five. No good. Hi. Come down. I'm gonna fix for you for twenty dollar. All right. Let's have it. <laughs> Wait, woman, see here now. One moment, please. You wish to speak to Liti? Yes, I do. So so. 
Well, you know who I am. Oh, yes, yes. You know why I'm here. I expected you. All right. But there is no hurry. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Don't be impertinent. I've come here for my letter. Here's your money. Oh, yes. That's a very funny letter. Look here. <sighs> One moment, please. How dare you let that man in while I'm here? Ah, I have white lady think too good for the tea's house. Give me my letter directly. Maybe the tea think her house too good for white lady. This horrible place, why did I ever come here? You Look. come to buy your life. Very well. If I did, let us come to business. Ten thousand dollars you wanted, isn't it? Here it is. Here. White lady very proud, but not too proud to share the same man with Li Ti. You horrible Chinese woman, you horrible Chinese woman, but not to Mr. Hammond. Many love names he had for me. Shall I tell you some of stop, them? Stop it, please. Can't be possible he ever touched a vile yellow thing like you. It yes. is possible. That is why you killed Mr. Hammond. Here, take that money. Take that money, I tell you, and give me my letter. Oh, yes. Because he loved Lee Ti. That is why you killed Mr. Hammond. Don't mention his name again. Don't mention his name again, I tell you. Cheat woman. Liar woman. Murder woman. Maybe I must give you back your letter. Maybe I let you hang for killing Mr. Hammond. All right. All right, just keep the letter. Keep it. I'd rather hang, I think, than... Yeah, you mention his name again. Let me out of here. Let me out, I tell you. But your husband. That husband you cheat so. How they will laugh at him. Yes. How all Singapore will laugh. Here. Take it, please. There. Give me the letter. White woman, a Chinese woman's feet. <laughs> Prisoner, rise and look upon the jury. Jurors, rise and look down on the prisoner. <clears throat> Gentlemen, have you reached a verdict? We have. What is that verdict? Not guilty. Oh. Order! Order in the court! Bless it, Order. darling! Oh, I'm so glad oh, you're oh, 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 o
I say, Howard, I was never so happy in all my life. Now for the fly in the ointment. What's all this going to cost? For my personal services, nothing. Oh. But there have been certain out-of-pocket expenses, I'm afraid, will be a little stiff. I know, you lawyers are all alike, a lot of robbers. How much will these expenses amount to? Well, there was one item, a letter of your wife's. I thought we ought to get hold of. A letter? Yes. Now, had that letter not been bought, and suppressed, she would never have been acquitted. What do you mean? And you had to pay for that letter? Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars? That's everything I have in the world. Who's the letter now? Have you got it? Yes. Where is it? Why do you want to know? I want to see it. I've got no right to show it to you. Is it your money that's buying that letter or mine? I've got to pay $10,000 for that letter and by God, I intend to see it. At least I'd like to know if I've got my money's worth. You know, darling, I have a kind of feeling that you're going to be even happier than ever. Hmm. Well, come along. Now, let's celebrate. Robert. Robert. Your cocktail. Oh, yes, my cocktail. Now, we must have a toast before we go. Robert. Huh? One from you. To your wife. Oh, yes. To my wife. Welcome home. Now, come along, Howard. We must be going home. Oh, no. Not really. Don't go now. Mm, yes, my dear. We are going to leave you two lovebirds together. Oh, oh, what a dear. I am sorry you must go. Good night, old man. Thanks, Hart. I'll see you at your car. Right. Good Well, Robert, you've read the letter. Yes. And I want to know exactly what it means. Robert, it doesn't mean anything. Let's tear it up. I want the truth. I know, but it doesn't mean anything. I swear to you, I've been so punished. Oh, what does anything matter anyway? We've got our whole lives before us. Let's forget all about it. 
And let us start over again. Exactly. What does it mean? Don't ask me. I want to know. Don't ask me anymore, please. I want to know whether you've been my wife or just a common... Don't say that. I want the truth. You want the truth. Very well, you shall have it. Jeffrey Hammond was my lover. Go on. He was my lover for years. We were constantly together. Until about a year ago and he began to change. And then I... I couldn't believe it. I, he was still everything in the world to me. God. He was my whole life until I heard about that Chinese woman. And then I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe that he didn't still love me. So I sent for him. You have the letter. Well, finally he came. I told him that I knew about that Chinese woman. He denied it. I knew he was telling a lie. Finally, I made him admit that it was the truth. And then he said to me that if he had to choose between me and that Chinese woman, he'd choose her. Oh, God, I don't know what happened after that. I went absolutely mad. I see that revolver and I fired at him and I fired and I fired and I fired until the gun was empty. And I gave you my name. Oh, oh. Worked and slaved for you. I know. I know. I know I've been vile, but I've no excuse to offer. And don't forget this. You brought me out to this filthy place, this godforsaken place, and you kept me here for seven years to live among a lot of dirty natives and dowdy planters' wives. My youth going, eating my heart out with loneliness, trying to make a go of it. And I did try. I did try for your sake. And what did I get from you? Nothing, nothing. Your whole life was just wrapped up in rubber. Rubber? That was yes. my business. Your business. Working to make money to give you the things you wanted. What I wanted. What I wanted. I'm flesh and blood. What I wanted was love, affection, happiness. But you took everything for granted. Once you got me out here to this godforsaken place, all you thought about was rubber. All that was on your mind was rubber. All day long I was alone. All night I had to listen to you talk of rubber. Rubber, rubber, rubber! Is it any wonder that when a man came along and talked to me of love and romance and music that I fell into his arms? Well, I did. And it's done now. So what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Nothing? Just that. What do you mean by that? Nothing. You don't mean to say that now that I've told you the truth that you expect to go on living with me out here? Yes. Why don't you send me away? Send you away? You're not going anywhere. There's no money to send you away. You're going to stay here. Right here in this house. With your memories. Ah. So I'm to be pinched. I'm to be punished, am yes. I? I'm to live here in this house with my memories. Very well. All right, if you with your smug respectability are going to punish me, and that is to be my punishment, that I'm to remain here in this house with my memories. All right, I'll give you something to remember. I, with all my heart and soul, still love the man I killed. Ha <laughs> ha! Take that with you. With all my heart and all my soul, I still love the man I killed. <laughs>